All right, uh, so this is this is going to be a breakdown of the Loomis method using a printout as a intermediary step before you actually start drawing a portrait. Okay, I think this is a very helpful tactic before you decide to look at a reference separately and then try and draw the portrait on a separate piece of paper. Okay. So, it's my friend Rob, who we're going to use as an example, okay? So, I'm going to be writing some notes here, and then I'm going to be drawing on top of Rob uh, so that things start to make a little more sense as far as what we call the Loomis method. So, first thing that we want to do is establish the target on the side of Rob's head, okay? So, where Rob's forehead starts to converge with the side of his head, which is right here, it's kind of on the, it, 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 it kind of meets the corner of people's eyebrows, okay? So, we're going to draw a target like so. Now I want you to notice that this is more of an oval because Rob's head is three-quarter view. We can see the side and the front of his head. So it's not going to be a, a nice clean circle as if you were looking at up like this, right? It's a circle in perspective due to Rob's three-quarter point of view. So it's a circle that's skewed, okay? That's really important. Depending on the direction of the head, your target, okay, for the Loomis method, needs to follow the perspective and direction of the head, okay? So next thing that we're gonna do here, we're gonna draw a line going down and follow Rob's jawline. And we'll even trace over his chin, okay? About that far. Then we're gonna draw a horizontal line like that. Okay, I'm not drawing it towards the middle for this reason. It needs to line up with Rob's eyebrows. Okay, and we'll even send it back towards the back of his skull, okay? Next piece of information that you should trace over, the nostrils. Not the tip of Rob's nose, the nostrils, okay? And look at the direction I'm, I'm tracing over. It's a curve, because going back to what I said earlier about the target, you have to follow the perspective of the head the direction that the head is facing, okay? Um, let's trace Rob's ear. Okay, the ear sits in this quadrant. Okay, there's four quadrants. One, two, three, four. Created by the target. One, two, three, four. Because this is Rob's uh, the right side of his head, it's going to sit here. If his head was facing the other way, it would fit, it would be in the fourth quadrant, okay? Now here's the other deal. Do not confuse the shape of his head with the contour line of his hair, okay? Hair sticks up above some people's, depending on their hairstyle, the way their hair is, it's going to stick above the skull. So you have to determine by using the front of one's, uh, of the subject's face, right? And start to make an educated guess as far as where the skull is. Don't be confused by the uh, outline, the contour of the hair, okay? And then I would say the last thing that we can include here is the, uh, the neckline that's present. Okay, 
Um, I'd say you, you could take one thing, one, one step further here is establish that. You know, have that line from the nostrils go across the face. You already have it for the chin because it's connected to the jawline. And then just one more detail that I think is imperative is having this vertical line go down the front of the bridge of the nose. I think that's key as well, okay? Um, maybe Rob's skull actually sticks a little bit outwards like that. It's a little thicker, okay? Now, let's uh, keep that there. And I'm just gonna write a few more notes. Target is key, okay? Now, once you've done that, you want to get a new piece of paper, new sketchbook sheet, and what you're going to do is, we're going to copy, not Rob himself, but the structure, the construction lines that we just traced over his head. We're going to copy that onto the paper first before we ever think about drawing the way he actually looks. Okay, so I have to keep Rob off camera for a bit so that you guys can see me draw here. Okay, apologize if some of the drawing gets cut off. The camera can only see so much. Um, so I'm going to start with the target again. And I'm copying these construction lines that I traced over as closely as possible, okay? So I'm using blind contour drawing here to determine the, and observational drawing in general to make sure that the distance between all of these lines are accurate. Now it could very well be a little bit off. That's okay. Right now, I just want to establish these construction lines and I, I might adjust afterwards. I'm also drawing this a little larger because this piece of paper is larger than the original scale of the printout. So the proportions are the same, it's just that the scale of this drawing is larger. Some adjustments will be, need to be made for sure. Just looking at this right now. You 
know what, maybe I don't need a lot of these details that I'm concerning myself with right now. I should just be worried about the overall shape. Simple forms. So, just to bring things back into view, that's what I've done, okay? Usually this step of tracing over, I don't do. Um, I will just do this, I'll, I'll do what I just finished doing by just looking at the reference. This intermediary step I think is good for you guys. But once you start getting used to drawing the Loomis method, you'll start to just do this inside your head. This image right now will appear in your mind's eye. But as a beginner, I think it's best to trace over your photographs first before you copy it onto paper. So do have a printout. Maybe if you have a digital tablet or you can do this on your phone, do this first, then do a line drawing on a piece of paper. Second. That's your goal. Alright? Good luck.